stream and let, let the commentary begin. This is 15 time casual game. Alright, starting with Knight F3. Um, I think theoretically my strongest reply is D5, so that's what I'm going to go with. I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone here, especially after that move. Um, but I think this transposes into lines I'm more familiar with. Um, and I think that theoretically is a free pawn, but I'm really afraid to take it. So here we are, on move three, I'm out of book. I am so out of book. Um, so yeah, I, I want to take the pawn. It looks like a free pawn. Uh, it's really hard to resist taking that. But you know that something's bad's going to happen if I do take it. I mean, you know, you got this... Alright, let's take it and find out just how bad it is to take. Because I need to know. And gosh darn it, Mannered Monkey's going to teach me a lesson. Or if he fails to do so, um, in the post-mortem we'll learn what it is that's so bad about this. Okay. So he's threatening to take here, and then discover an attack, and win my rook. But there's a difference between just making a threat and being successful. And I'm not sure that this is going to work out for white. Like just because uh, he can discover that doesn't automatically make it work. Um, so I'm tempted to play queen c7. And then um, shuffle my bishop in if, like, some discovery happens. Um, but perhaps better is just knight d7. And if all this goes down... Oh, wait, he's threatening knight e5. That's the other point behind bishop b7 or queen c7 here. Because um, I can deal with some of these immediate threats. Maybe even b6 is safer. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's defend along this diagonal. I'm not sure whether my queen belongs on this square, this square, or maybe even here. So we'll leave that question open. And if he plays knight e5, well, then I'll have to make a decision. I still think I'm okay, though. So there's knight e5, threatening knight takes b5, um, but I've got options. One of these options is move the queen somewhere and hit the knight. It's actually not looking like a bad option here. Another is shore up defense of the b5 pawn, some alternative way, like a6. Again, not looking so bad. Um, well, there's just like queen c8 to defend the bishop. I know I mentioned moving the queen somewhere, but c8 is definitely on the table. Uh, I'm afraid if I go to c7, he's going to follow with bishop f4 at some point. b6 doesn't look so bad, though. So, I guess I go to b6. The, the advantage of c7 is that it forces him to do something about the knight right away. Um, so that's either like a d4 or... I don't know what. Probably d4. And then I could play e6 and does bishop f4 to hit my queen. Uh, it felt comfortable at first, but... After you get into that, it doesn't seem like such a bright idea anymore. Um, yeah, 
but b6 looks like a reasonably safe square for the queen. So I'm protecting the bishop, um, protecting c6, not that it needs to be overprotected, um, and maybe threatening stuff along this line or that line, and giving myself a tempo to play things like knight d7 or e6. Actually, that's something I didn't consider. So what if I played, um, instead of queen b6, I could have tried queen c7. And then follow with knight d7 if you play something like d4. Um, there's a lot of things to consider. And very little time has been taken to actually consider them. So... Another thing to consider is, do I want to take on b3? Uh, another option is just queen d4, attacking the rook, attacking the knight. Um, it's hard to see how this could go wrong. How could this go wrong? I just feel like White's playing on both flanks and has completely ignored the center. And um, it's not fair that I would be the one getting punished for that. So, do I just do queen d4 here? I mean, what else can I do? If I had some other constructive move, maybe I would have found that instead, but it seems queen d4 is the only real thing to consider. Um, and c6 is defended. It's okay if he takes b5, because then I just take on e5, and I'm forking his knight on b5 and the rook on a1. Yeah, I just not... I am not understanding something here, so... Mannered Monkey will have to disabuse me of my ignorance, because there's only so long I can spend looking at this before trying to play something. So what about this position am I missing, Mannered Monkey? Show me. Teach me. Inform me. Or don't. Okay. Well, apparently that was just a clean piece to the good. Um, that's kind of weird. I guess I'll just have to keep developing then. Alright, he's threatening some discoveries here. I'm not too alarmed by that. Because, like, oh, well, I mean, he could win a pawn if I do this. No, I'm sorry, his bishop would hang. So, yeah, I have time for this. Knight moves. Um. If he was, like, knight d5, I could take this bishop, and his knight could win my rook, but the knight's trapped in the corner, and I just do bishop takes knight. I just want to develop my pieces, and peacefully. And then, after the opening stage, um, who knows what'll follow next. Uh, okay, so, he's threatening. Now the bishop's not hanging, so this knight could go anywhere, including d5 which previously was not a safe place to go to. Um, so let's get my queen out of harm's way. I f well, I was going to say I feel like the C file is going to open up one day, so I don't want to be on the C file, but right now it's not opening. So it's a question between A5 and C7, both of which look like really good squares for my queen. Um, yeah, it's hard to choose. Let's, yeah, let's do this. So we're going to shore up this bishop here. And when he gives me some time, I will move my bishop and then castle. Um, so let's move my bishop and then castle. Yeah, as promised. castles. I castle. 
d4. All right. Um, let's develop this rook. Because this is lined up with the queen. All right. Um, can I play c5? c5, knight, b5 is weird. e5... Um, it's not so compelling because it locks my bishop in. c5 is really what I want to play, but I don't know if I can play it. Yeah, e5 makes a target on e5, so I don't want that. In fact, this is a good um this is a good blockade we've got going here. I am up a knight for a pawn, and I just need to safely develop and not lose material. So his big threat here is e5. That's what he wants to do is um I really can't use positional considerations here at all. This is all coming down to tactics. Positionally, I don't want to play e5, because this diagonal gets quite messy. Um, but tactically, e5 just wins the d-pawn. And if he pushes the d-pawn, then this creates this weakness on c5. Um, I don't know. Something's not right here. Like, this formation is really nice. It's just that once he plays e5, I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. I want to play knight d7, knight f8, and then I don't know where this knight's going to go. Maybe this knight reroutes itself to f8 once he kicks the knight. Um, maybe this knight has to go some other way forward. Yeah, d7 actually isn't a good launching square because his d-pawn's um, a really big nuisance at the moment. There really aren't any good advanced posts for this knight, which is why I want to route it to f8. Or I need to break this up somehow. Oh, if I play c5, no, if I play e5 and he pushes, we exchange and I have more open lines for my pieces. But then e5 is loose, but his bishop's blocked by his e4 pawn, so... I don't have a firm reason for wanting to do this. I mean, this does blockade his bishop, and that's like the best reason I can give for doing it. But tactically, out of all the variations I looked at, this looks most appealing. Um, and I just need to finish my development. Okay, so I could play bishop a6 and hit this pawn. It could be fun. I don't know that it gets me anywhere, though. Well, it does better there than it, where it currently stands, so that's probably an improvement. Like, here it's not a target for this rook anymore. And this clears the way for my rook to go uh, attack on the same file. Meanwhile, while that's being considered, um, I've got this side. Not there. This. So, usually white would just bring his knight to f3 to d2 to deal with this. Except for one little detail. That knight's not on the board anymore. So, it's going to be a little trickier for white to hold on to the pawn without the knight. Okay. 
I mean, it's cute. Because he's forcing me to do something. I'm not sure what. So, like, he's kind of threatening to take my queen and stuff. If I, like, if I take the knight and he takes back, he's got this attack on my bishop. But if I just move over, I mean, what's he going to do? Is he going to leave the knight there? Is he taking on e5? Ah, he's taking on e5, not that turn, but the following turn. Um... Still, I can't help but wonder if there's some tactic here that works to my advantage. I could go to b8. I guess he could take c6. Yeah, in fact, that would be silly. Um, so is he winning a pawn here? Is that what's happening? I guess that's what's happening. Although I'm winning the C-pawn right back, so it's pretty even. Um, I don't see anything better, so we're just going to play. We take C6, I have to take back. I mean, I think I do. And then, sure, e5 hangs. Um, there might be a f potential discovery afterward. Um, well, we got some tactics here, guys. Mannered Monkey's not taking this line down. Um, So his next idea is that he wants this discovery on the long diagonal to win material. Um, I suppose that settles that. I have to take this knight. My bishop's no good whatsoever. So we're going to exchange there. The knight's a monster, and now it's gone. If he takes with the pawn, his one rook is blocked, and if he takes with the rook, his other rook's blocked. And he's trying to reconcile all this. One thing to note that he might not notice is that, um, okay, yeah, taking that way um, expands the scope of the queen here. Oh, shoot. Wait, no, this doesn't win material for him because I have a pin. So I just develop my rook. And so now I'm threatening to take on e5. Accidental tactics for the win. But, I mean, what's he going to do? I've got a knight, he's got two pawns. The two pawns he has are this pawn and that pawn. So these two advanced pawns are his, uh, his compensation. And it's not nothing. It is something to take seriously. Are we going to see him go to the corner? 
Or is he gonna march his king forwards? Or I'm sorry, over to the toward the center? Forward or uh, toward the corner? Not an easy decision. Alright, he picks that door. Um I don't need to take that bishop, but taking it's fun, but I don't need to. So I'm going to do something else. So this is more productive. Not that I'm playing that next turn, but uh, this idea is more productive than sacking the rook for the bishop and pawn. Sure, three pieces versus queen and rook... Or Two pieces versus the rook in a queen's endgame could be a lot of fun. Um, but I think this is strategically better for me. Especially in this line. So we got this check. Then after the check, um, I still have everything guarded. Everything is defended. So we'll go threaten mate and... Well, that's not mate, because this queen can take it, but... Um, but now I'm threatening mate. So he's forced to go back and defend, and his bishop can only block on light squares, so my knight can just dance around the bishop and move to e3. Um... Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could play this, too. So now I have bishop and knight for two pawns? For one pawn. Alright, so we're going to fork the king and the pawn and win the remaining pawn. Yep, and he concedes the game. That was a fun game. In some ways, I think this was instructive. Um, psychologically, perhaps... Oh, that reminds me. So on move three, um, we had an instructive point here that I played d takes c4, and I was out of book. Let's try to remedy that here, not that a computer can tell me uh, the correct book move, because it might not have the latest books installed. But let's at least get a general feel of how right or wrong I was here. And yeah, I think psychologically I played well. I coped with the challenges that my opponent put forth. Um, so I think we had some interesting moments there. Um, but I th and yeah, one thing that he did well was create drum up some counterplay even when things were going south. So yeah, d4 taking the center followed by e4 taking more of the center it was strong, especially because I probably didn't play exactly or precisely here. Um, I'm not sure what black should do, uh, but probably what I did was incorrect. Okay, so d takes c4 is just fine according to uh, the AI. Uh, thanks, Fish. Um, okay, so knight d7 is a book move where it's more accurate than what I played. Um, oh, because I could do queen takes d7. I don't have to do king takes there. And this evicts the knight, unless, say, um, he plays d4. This is what I was concerned about. And I should apparently just take this. It takes back. And I get a check. And he takes, and a6. Okay. Interesting. Um, apparently this favors black. I have no idea why. It seems pretty even to me. The only thing slightly in black's favor is that this knight's on a3. I mean, this pawn on e5 looks really strong, right? Let's just keep going with the main line and see what uh, an AI suggests here. 
Right, so I need to blockade the double pawns so they don't advance any further. So e6 is correct. Knight c2 is going to happen sooner or later. Um, rook to d8, really? I don't know. I'm not sure about this. I guess maybe if you feel that the king's safer... Well, the king needs to be where the majority of the pawns are. And you're going to line up all your pieces one day behind this pawn mass and uh, pawn rushing. But, okay, we'll see. Um, yeah, you don't want the king to get caught in this business. Um, so, AI is revising its evaluation more towards zero. Initially thought this was quite strong for black. Um, I don't understand b4. Oh, b4 is protected. So there, from that standpoint, it does make good sense. Let's go back. Only now white bothers to trade. Uh, black exchanges, white exchanges. H5. Oh! So here, here we've got basically a Berlin defense, Rui Lopez, except instead of white having pawns like here, here, and here, uh, white's got pawns here and there. But normally white would set up some kind of formation around this way, and black would be symmetric, and it'd be much harder for black to advance. Um, this is more like a Berlin defense where black somehow landed a pawn on c4 and is quite happy with this circumstance. Granted, this bishop is not very hot, but black's passed pawn is going to be a nuisance for the remainder of the game. And black probably shouldn't have much trouble dislodging one of these pawns over here once he's developed. So yeah, with enough patience, black should be able to squeeze white if not win this. Um, So yeah, white would not play d4. White would play what the AI originally had suggested, which is just exchange the knights and acknowledge that this is bad, this is okay, this is defended, and black's just got more space. Um, yeah, the remainder of the game, I think it did pretty well. I, I'm winning some material here. Uh, Knight f6 is a reasonable developing move. He doesn't take on c4, I just keep developing. I move my queen back. At some point I could have considered c5. Uh, in fact, I was considering it, but I don't know if it was any good. Um, they do say knights before bishops. I was afraid of getting my king mated in the middle, so I moved my bishop a bit early. Um, Moving my knight would have left me more options as to where to develop everything, but I didn't know where I wanted to move the knight. So, it's kind of a catch-22 there. But yeah, I castle, rook d8, again ignores the knights before bishops kind of uh, principle where you're supposed to move your minor pieces and develop them, um, and then worry about where the larger pieces go. So yeah, knight d7 probably would have been more accurate. Um, but rook d 8s what I played. I thought I was doing awesome here. Uh, e4 is apparently too much for this position. For the reason I played, e5. Uh, this is actually not so good for white. In fact, yeah, I played really well until I did knight b6. Oh, this is violating the rule of moving a piece twice in the opening which ended up costing me the e-pawn, which right now it looks really hard to win this pawn, especially because I'm defending it and there's a knight in the way. But yeah, this is what cost me the e-pawn. And I should have just continued developing, like, rook b8. I guess white makes some move. Oh, to try to defend his pawn. And I just fortify e5 and drop my knight on c5 and nothing's going on here. And then, very patiently, I have to maneuver my way forward. Um, but yeah, 
Actually, the knight on c5 makes this difficult because uh, what, what was White's last move here? Bishop a3. See if he doesn't go for that. Say he tries to do something, I don't know, like this, and hold his e4 point. Um, that unless I find some technical possibility, this is going to be quite the struggle. And I like to resolve things tactically when I can, and maybe this isn't resolvable through tactics. I don't know, I like knight d3. Knight d3 looks tempting. Is there anything wrong with it? <laughs> Never mind, I don't like it so much anymore. I'm not the only person threatening a pin. Alright, so we exchange bishops. Yeah, we keep the rook there. This gets quite ugly. I was not prepared to go into any of this. Um, so, black controls b5 and e5, white controls pretty much everything else. But, black's doing okay, somehow. It's the sort of thing that only a computer could possibly recommend. Um, <laughs> it keeps changing its mind, too. You sure about this? You sure about that? Is that what you really want to do? Are you sure? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think queen there is good psychologically. Um, but yeah, this is a fun position. Um, I missed something here. Uh, so bishop takes. Yeah, I should have done bishop takes. Um, that's my bad. Oh! Okay, that's why. I saw bishop takes, I just did not see c5. Like, I've got two pieces defending this square now. And somehow I was thinking that he had three pieces, this pawn, this pawn, and the rook, all attacking that. And I thought, no way will c5 work. It works here. And in fact, it's awesome. And this is what I missed in the game. Anyhow, uh, this has been good fun. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll probably switch to a different game soon, and probably see you soon. If not, have a good day.